The largest of our windows is a magnificent interpretation of Leonardo da Vinci's 15th century masterpiece, The Last Supper. Jesus is celebrating the Passover meal with his disciples when, according to the Gospel of Matthew, he declares to them, This night one of you will betray me. Leonardo portrays the moment immediately after, and we are drawn into the disciples' shock and dismay as they consider this startling statement. The disciples' faces show emotions running the gamut of love, fear, indignation, disbelief, and grief. Leonardo was a well-established artist in 1482 when the Duke of Milan, Italy, called him to serve as his chief painter and engineer. Because of his many talents in the arts, science, and engineering, as well as his innovative, curious, and creative mind, Leonardo is considered to be the Renaissance man. In 1492, the Duke asked Leonardo to create a painting on a wall of the monk's dining hall in a small monastery, Santa Maria della Grazia in Milan. Leonardo completed the painting three years later, and it stands there today, over six centuries later. The painting sits high on the wall, with the bottom edge eight feet above floor level. It measures 15 by 29 feet. Our window measures 10 by 18 feet and sits slightly above eye level. Portraying 13 people at a table was a composition challenge. Leonardo's use of a table much too large for the room enabled him to clearly show the reactions on the faces and the body language of each man. Leonardo wanted the face of Jesus to be the center point of his painting, with all else revolving around him. To achieve this, and to give the illusion of three-dimensional depth on a flat surface, Leonardo used the technique of one-point perspective. No matter where viewers stand, their eyes are immediately drawn to the face of Jesus. Remember, Jesus has just made the startling statement of his betrayal. At that moment, he is alone with his thoughts, seeming calm and thoughtful, as the others respond. But he is also conflicted as he contemplates what lies ahead. John's Gospel says, Jesus was troubled in spirit. Notice his hands. The left is palm up, and the right is palm down, indicating a struggle between God's will and human will. The empty spaces around him isolate Jesus as well to emphasize his dominance. Leonardo uses the light streaming through the window and the arch over the window behind Jesus in place of a halo to symbolize his holiness. His head and his outstretched arms form an equilateral triangle, symbolic of the Trinity. The red robe foretells of the crucifixion. All 12 apostles were Jewish men. Most were fishermen, but the group also included a tax collector, a religious zealot, and two sets of brothers. From left to right, we see the individual reactions to the bombshell statement Jesus has just made. In the first group are three fishermen, Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, James the Younger, and Andrew. They are all stunned. Bartholomew has risen to a standing position and is leaning forward, possibly straining to hear. Andrew holds his hands up in a stop gesture. The next group shows three disciples who have prominent roles in the passion of Jesus. Peter, leaning and pointing toward Jesus, Judas Iscariot in the blue robe, and John with a clean-shaven face and flowing hair. Peter, a fisherman like his brother Andrew, was a man of action. The dagger he is holding in his right hand foreshadows his use of a sword to cut off the ear of one of the men who came to the garden to arrest Jesus. Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, is pushed forward, isolating him from the others. He is recoiling from Jesus, and his face is shadowed as the light of Jesus has gone from him. The money bag he holds in his right hand has two meanings. He was once the trusted treasurer of the apostles, but now he holds the 30 pieces of silver he received to betray Jesus. In front of him, Judas has tipped over the salt cellar, an omen of impending doom. John was the youngest of the 12. 
Along with his brother James the Elder and Peter, he was part of the inner circle of Jesus. Later, in his walk with him, he became known as John the Beloved. He stood with the crowd at the crucifixion, and from the cross, Jesus entrusted his mother, Mary, to John for the remainder of her life. The third group of apostles includes Thomas, James the Elder, and Philip. Thomas is known as the doubter, always wanting facts and evidence. He is shown with his finger pointing upwards. He wanted proof that the risen Christ was really the Jesus who died on the cross. Jesus allowed him to touch his wounds, and Thomas believed. James the Elder has a horrified expression as he stares downward in shock. Philip has his hands over his heart as if to say, You see my heart, Lord. Is it I? The final group shows Matthew, Thaddeus, also called Jude, and Simon the Zealot. Matthew was a Jew, but notice his Roman hairstyle. As a tax collector for the oppressive Roman government, he was wealthy, yet despised by his own people. Matthew seems to look past the man next to him and directly into the eyes of Simon, searching for answers. Simon was a zealot, a fervent religious and political group of Jews who were anti-Rome. Today, we would call them terrorists. He certainly would not have been a friend of Matthew under normal circumstances. Their loyalty to Jesus is what made their relationship work. The man in the middle of this group, Thaddeus or Jude, is known as the saint for lost causes. Notice where he's looking. It appears he's looking at the viewer, questioning, are you the betrayer? There is credible speculation that the face of Jude is Leonardo's self-portrait.